Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News! Holy crud, it's been a while, has it not? A lot has happened in my life, but let's not talk about that because we're here to talk about the news. Hello, there's a Nintendo Direct coming. Duh, you know we're talking about that in a little bit. But first, let's get into what has basically been a confirmed thing. It's still rumored, we'll probably be talked about in the Direct. And that is Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, and Rogue Remastered are listed for Nintendo Switch by a Greek retailer. Now, that in and of itself is just an interesting tidbit, not necessarily newsworthy, until Z Huge X of Reset Era fame, and also an analyst, a professional analyst inside the industry. He puts out a lot of things on Twitter as well. He has come out and said it's real. So, yeah, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Remastered, Rogue, etc., all that stuff is coming to Nintendo Switch. And this isn't even announced for other platforms yet, so I assume it's going to come to those as well. I fully expect to hear about it in the Nintendo Direct, along with some prior rumored stuff out there, like Overwatch and stuff like that that we've talked about. So, uh, some cool stuff. Let's just get into that next story. This is actually just a real quick one. I want to remind you, Final Fantasy VIII Remastered is available on Switch today right now. This is big because it's never been re-released since its original release way back when. I actually played it originally on PC, so it's great to see this game come back, and as I said, it's available now, right now on Switch. Like, if you've never played Final Fantasy VIII, now's the time to do it. So, what are you doing? Like, even if you have a, a, a PlayStation or something, like, go buy this game. It's great. It's one of my favorite Final Fantasy games, one of the most underrated Final Fantasy games, in my opinion. Astral Chain uh, came out last Friday, and we don't have sales figures yet in Japan or the U.S. or anything like that. But we do have the charts from the U.K., which don't give us any numbers, but do give us a ranking in terms of which game sold best. And Astral Chain has debuted it at number one in the U.K. Now, this might not mean anything other than the fact that a Platinum Games game has never actually debuted at number one in the U.K., so this is a big deal, it's a Switch exclusive game, it's at number one, and it's the first Platinum Games game ever to debut in the number one spot in the UK. So that's big news, congratulations Platinum Games, congratulations Nintendo, it definitely looks like you smash hit on your hands, 87 plus on Metacritic, it's going great, I know the review bombing's happening, and speaking of that review bombing, Hideki Kamiya, uh, you know, the lead guy behind Astral Chain, had something to say about this, because a fan tweeted at him in Japan about how he might, you know, do you hate Sony? Uh, are you, uh, you know, kind of this guy that just doesn't like Sony gamers? Uh, why isn't Astral Chain on Switch? Well, Hideki Kamiya responded, and needless to say, he wasn't taking any bullshit. Here's what he said, directly quoted. Well, it would be great to have Mario, Zelda, and Metroid on PlayStation 4 too. As for me, do I hate PlayStation? I'm just a developer fulfilling my contractual obligations. So I don't know, maybe you could try asking my publisher and investor, Nintendo. In other words, all of the review bombing and whining from Sony fans is bullshit. Nintendo bought and paid for this game. They co-developed the game. They literally funded the game 100% and they hired Platinum Games to be the lead developer. Nothing about this game is possible to come to PlayStation 4 unless Nintendo said, hey, take a game we paid for and put it on someone else's platform, which isn't going to happen. This is akin to Sony buying a game from Platinum Games and then saying, hey, why don't you go put that game on Nintendo? It's not going to happen. Like, it's such a ridiculous notion that Hideki Kamiya, Platinum Games, hates the PlayStation platform when they put so many games on the PlayStation platform. Nintendo bought, paid, and co-developed this game. What more are Sony fans understanding? I understand being upset about not getting a high quality game on your system, but who are you really upset at? Why are you upset at Platinum Games? What did they do wrong? Nintendo approached them, gave them money, signed a contract with Platinum. So be mad at Nintendo, I guess. Uh, then again, what are you mad about anyways? This is the way the industry works. Sony buys exclusives all the time. In fact, Sony doesn't have that many internal studios, so almost every exclusive game they have, Death Stranding, was bought. So, apparently Terry Bogard from King of Fighters might be making an appearance as a Smash DLC character. Now, uh, this is kind of a longer story that's been going on for at least a week. Basically, 
Nintendo of Europe did an oopsie uh, when they were listing, listing the Smash Pass on their website and listed characters from SNK. They didn't really list the character name, but basically that a character from SNK is in the group was kind of in the fine print. Uh, and that's been deleted off the Nintendo uh, UK, Nintendo of Europe area. But it doesn't matter. The internet found it, and that's it. Everyone knows about it. It definitely appears a character from SNK's library is coming in. And King of Fighters is one of the biggest franchises they have. Terry Bogart being one of the biggest you know characters from that franchise. So it does make a lot of sense. But where we're getting the Terry stuff from specifically actually comes from Vagabond over on Game facts. He has actually been the one who leaked Ridley, and he also leaked also Simon Belmont as games coming to, or as characters, I guess, coming to Super Smash Bros. DLC. So, uh, yeah, basically, he has been spot on. I mean, I know Ridley wasn't part of the DLC, but I, you know what I'm saying, right? Like, before we knew Ridley was in the game, he leaked it. So, the bottom line is that uh, we're pretty stoked uh, to see this happen. I know there, there's actually been a little debate on Twitter about why are we bringing back these old characters and all, like, Smash is a celebration, and I don't really don't want to debate that right now. It's just a celebration of gaming. Uh, you can want your characters and not get in. Other people might want Terry Bogart, and he might be getting in. So uh, just stay tuned. You know, we have a direct coming up, so we might have a lot of uh, clarity on this very soon. The numbers are in, and Pokemon Go had its largest month in terms of revenue and players since September of 2016, last month. And the reason that's happening is because the game's just gotten a lot better. They keep adding more and more Pokemon, making it more better. You could uh, battle more people, and, and, and they just made everything better. The game today is closer to what the promise was back in 2016. Well, um, yeah, it's close to $3 billion in gross revenue. Three b -b -b billion. To put this in perspective, that is equal to one video game at 60 bucks a pop selling $60 million copies pokemon let's go pikachu let's go eevee sold 11 million so just putting this in perspective like for the pokemon franchise and gaming on the whole uh pokemon goes huge it is one of the largest things in gaming still to this day so if you're wondering why we're still talking about it and reporting on this it's because these numbers are astronomical and there's never been a mobile uh port of a major ip like this that's ever been this successful and there might never be another one as successful again nintendo certainly failing at uh, replicating it uh, Dr. Mario actually had a horrible debut and is the worst uh, you know, you know, launch mobile game for Nintendo yet with revenue and installs. So uh, Nintendo can't seem to crack what Niantic did, but uh, man, Pokemon Go. So we've been talking about it since the very beginning. There is a Nintendo Direct happening tomorrow at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. It is 40 minutes long and they will have a focus on Sword and Shield and Luigi's Mansion 3, but they did say they will talk about games for the rest of 2019. This is basically what they do for every major Nintendo Direct. They pick two major titles, but they talk about everything else. And then when they say it through the end of 2019, they always end up teasing something for the next year outside of the period they're talking about. Now, if they do talk about something like Animal Crossing, I think that would almost be a bit expected at this point because uh, it does come out early next year. Uh, Emily Rogers also put out there that there is a mystery game. It's exclusive to Switch landing in December. That should probably be unveiled tomorrow as well. Uh, Smash DLC, Banjo-Kazooie release dates, all that stuff. Uh, we're going to find out everything tomorrow. So uh, I don't really want to say much more because I'm doing a live stream on this. Of it, you know, Actually, I probably already did it at the point that you're listening to this. Uh, and we obviously have the direct tomorrow. So uh, just stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of great news tomorrow. It's going to be a huge day here at the channel. Speaking of Banjo-Kazooie, uh, we might already kind of know when it's going to be coming, although it could be shadow dropped in the Tenor Direct. Obviously, things happen. Uh, basically, advertisements for it have appeared at 7-Eleven in Japan next to advertisements of Link's Awakening for, obviously, September 20th. No, that doesn't mean that's the day that Banjo-Kazooie is going to come out, but what happened in the past with these ads is Hero was advertised in the same way at 7-Elevens in Japan, and at the end of that advertisement date, a week later, Hero came out. Uh, so, yeah, basically, it sounds like we're getting Banjo-Kazooie before the end of this month. Again, we'll find out tomorrow. I guarantee you, we'll find out tomorrow. I, I mean, well, maybe we'll find out tomorrow. I have no idea. To be honest, dude, I don't think it's really know what Nintendo's doing other than killing it. Hell yeah. Anyways, welcome back to Prime News. It has been a long time coming, but subscribe, comment. There'll be more skits in future ones. I had to rush this one because, hey, I got to talk about it direct on a live stream. So, woo Let's go. Well, seriously, like,